Let's take a look at some of the changes in the three to six ton small rooftop product that could have an impact on maintenance and service. As we move around this unit, we'll look at some of the components that have changed and have affected the procedures just by a small amount. Most of the procedures that you're used to with these size machines probably haven't changed. Some of the components have. It may also allow us a little easier access to other spots within the machine for inspection, especially during the maintenance or more importantly, the service procedures. We'll start at this end. This obviously is the filter access end. The filter door has not changed. It's the same one piece door. It doesn't require a tool for removal. We lift up, pull it out, and it allows us access to the return air filters. The standard filters for this machine are the two inch, 10% efficient throwaway filters. Accessing those, there's still two in this particular chassis size. We still have that hinged rail at the top of the filter rack that allows these filters to be pivoted forward and removed from the unit for easy service. With the removal of both of these filters, this allows us access for cleaning of the evaporator coil. It also allows us inspection of the condensate pan just below the evaporator coil. The replacement of them, we align the bottom of the return air filter in the blower rail, lifting the top rail, and simply slide them into place. Pay attention, if you will, to the directional arrow on the filter, as there is a coating on the entering air side and the leaving air side that allows it to trap dust and prevent the fiberglass fibers, in this particular case, from being entrained onto the coil and into the space. Make sure that you pivot the upper rail down, which holds the filters in place. If your unit's installed with a condensate overflow switch, it'll be visible down in the condensate pan with the return air filters removed. Economizer options and accessories, which are very popular with this particular chassis size, has not changed. The many different types and styles of economizers that are available with the current product will fit this particular product. Access is the same. As a matter of fact, the connection for the wiring harness to interface with those economizers once they're installed is still here also. So if you've got an economizer as an accessory field installed or as an option from the factory, this is the connection point and this is the mounting point. This panel is the same as well as the opening in the bottom for the return air. So it fits on the same curb. Moving down this side of the machine, we're gonna look at the compressor access opening on the unit. With the compressor access panel removed, I can see connections up here for both my high side and my low side pressure, as well as liquid connections so I can check my refrigerant side pressure drop. By removing this plug in the top of the unit, I can route my gauge lines out through the top, replace the panel, and then I prevent any bypass air over the condenser so I get a truer reading of how the refrigeration system is working. Notice this particular unit has a TXV type refrigerant control system. Follow the charging table or charging chart that is on the panel on that particular machine to confirm that I've got the right refrigerant charge. Moving to the condenser end of the unit, we're going to first remove the louvered grill. to expose the condenser coil. This is a plate fin coil, and the cleaning instructions for maintenance are going to be similar to what we've offered in the past. As with any plate fin coil, whether it's the bare copper aluminum coil or whether it's one of the treated coils that may have a coating on it, we want to certainly follow the recommendations in the installation instructions for the chemical that we will use to clean this coil and the procedure. Single roll coils may have a slightly different procedure. I may be able to clean a single roll coil without removing the top or jacking the top cover up. If it's a two row coil, oftentimes I'll have to jack up the top a little bit, a few more fasteners, 
and then split the end of the coil so that I can clean the debris that would collect between the outer and the inner coil rows. One other little change with this particular machine anyways is the condenser fan. The motor itself is no different, however the condenser fan is moved to a composite prop. Uh, the orifice is slightly different, they're designed to work together and the alignment instructions for replacing that particular prop should the motor have to be replaced are in the installation instruction service portion of it. We've turned the unit around, now we're going to remove the outer panels and see what's different. With the control box excess panel removed, we can see what looks remarkably the same with this small rooftop unit. The changes that we're going to talk about are specifically with how I adjust the fan and the changes to the control terminal board, which is different with this type of indoor fan assembly. Additionally, notice that there is a sticker that guides us through setting up the airflow levels for the indoor fan. Removing that panel exposes the balance of the control box components. As we can see, this is a gas heat machine, so it has an integrated gas control module. This is the newer integrated gas control module that uses a pressure switch for combustion fan proving. We've got a run capacitor for our outdoor fans, a contactor for our compressor. This is a three-phase unit, so we've got a three-lug terminal connection for our incoming high-voltage power our control voltage transformer <clears throat> and our new fan control board. This fan control board is not much different wiring wise than the existing one. We've got our low voltage connection for a low voltage indoor thermostat, our jumper wire connections for things like occupancy control, smoke control, what is a little bit different about this particular board is the fact that at the lower portion of it, as we'll see later, there is a way that we're going to set up the airflow for the indoor fan. It's a different procedure, again, as reflected on the label on the outer panel. For comparison purposes, we're going to show you the current controls terminal board. As you can see, it's about the same size. Our connections are very similar. And just like on the current one here, there are connections for the refrigerant safeties that are out there in the refrigerant circuit. What is different in the new board on the lower portion is the setup for proper indoor fan air delivery. Moving to the indoor fan panel, there is a significant difference compared to the old units or the current design. Previous to this, we had a forward curve fan. Now we are moving over to a vane axial fan. It's a composite fan, not a metal fan. It's direct drive and it's controlled by an ECM motor. The use of this particular design with these in the ECM motors has eliminated the requirement for a variable frequency drive on some models. This being a gas heat machine is also required that we relocate the limit switch which was normally installed directly above the heat exchangers in the fan compartment to a lower level on the heat exchanger access panel. There's one additional temperature sensor that's installed on the housing for this particular fan assembly and that is an additional safety due to the composite nature of the scroll and the fan wheel itself. One other thing to point out is that the stator temperature limit switch located on the indoor fan casing is a manual reset limit switch. So, if the temperature gets too high and it trips, you'll need to physically press the red reset button to reset it once things have cooled down and any issues have been addressed. It's important to note that every unit requires an external trap and that that trap be built using the dimensions in the installation instructions. Additionally, it is important to note that the trap is a service component. Ultimately, just like the condensate pan, this will require some level of cleaning or maintenance. 
Consult the installation instructions for the proper dimensions. There you have it, a quick look at the differences in this three to six ton family of products. We've seen differences in components, connections, and some of the service and maintenance that is affected by those changes.